Thanks for tuning into season two of the Forward Podcast, a resource brought to you by Meadowbrook Church. In this season, we're exploring the topic of personal Bible study, the components that help make it successful, and how to be effective in your time studying God's Word. I'm Daniel Doak, your host for the season. I'm joined by Hunter Heinzman, our associate pastor here at Meadowbrook. Today, we're discussing the posture of good Bible study. So, like I said, Hunter, we're talking about good Bible study, or the posture of good Bible study, and we're not talking about the physical posture. We're not talking about standing or kneeling or anything. So break it down a little bit. Help us understand what we are talking about. Yeah. So by posture, Daniel, what we're what we're talking about is the way we approach the scriptures. What what is you know when you're you're standing or when you're moving into a room, you have a certain posture, a way of in which you enter into it, and that is uh, is mental uh, as much as it is physical. Uh, and we're thinking about how do we approach the scriptures? What are the postures that we embrace? as we go to open up our Bibles to study God's Word. And we're going to talk about three of those postures uh, today. So really, we're essentially, we're talking about the the intentionality behind how we approach studying God's Word. Yes. So we talked about the first episode, um, just the meaningful components of Bible study, like prayer, um, contemplative reading, virtue, and community. And these are important concepts in helping lay that foundation as we approach time in God's Word. Yes, absolutely. And they really get into um, the first posture, which is humility, uh, because when you think about each of those uh, each of those components that we talked about last week, they both highlight kind of our insufficiency as yeah. as as human beings, those who are who are created by God, but are not, in fact, God. And that's what one of the what theologians sometimes call the creator creature distinct, distinction. God is the creator and we are the creature. And. And what that is, in, why that's important for Bible study, because of what we believe the scriptures to be. The scriptures are breathed out by God. They are the word of God. And they reveal to us the mind of God. They point to who God is and all of his infinite glory and majesty. And there's a, a posture of humility as we approach the text that is important. That's why we pray for help. That's why we, we think deeply about the text and asking God to open our eyes to it. It's why we, we, we need, we recognize the need for the, Regeneration of the Holy Spirit, who makes us alive with the the virtues of Christ, and and who uh, enables us to to study God's Word with other people and teaches us with uh, one another. Because you know, as we talked about a little bit last week, but biblical inter- interpretation, good Bible study, while we're doing it as individuals and personally, is really not an individual sport. It's one of those things that we really need to rely on. Uh, that helps us. It helps us when we rely on others, because as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And especially when we're thinking about understanding the mind of God as revealed in the scriptures, we definitely want to rely on the people of God. And we, I think I used the uh, the instance of the Bereans uh, is that they're studying the scriptures and they're holding, they're checking Paul according to the scriptures, but they're doing so together as the people of God. Yeah, and I think back to I was in high school, uh, early high school, and I was asked to lead come up with a Bible study and lead it. And it was something that I kind of approached in the aspect of, Hey, I'm running in there. I, I think I want to talk about these things. Let me Google some verses about that. And it really was kind of hit on the idea. We're not approaching it with humility. If we're coming in thinking about, here's what I want to talk about. Here's what I'm going to pull out from the word. It's, it's really counter to what we're supposed to do when we approach, approach time studying God's word. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that really kind of comes into this, the next, um, the next posture, which is the idea that Scripture helps us understand Scripture. Mm-hmm. Scripture is the one that guides us uh, in in our interpretation or in our Bible study. Uh, some people have called this before in, in kind of the Reformation, post-Reformation errors, the analogy of Scripture or the principle that the clear parts of Scripture interpret the other parts of Scripture. Uh, and this includes a lot of different things. One, it means that we give respect to context, you know, what's happening in the immediate context of this passage. And also broader than that, it's talking about having the entire canon in mind. There's a there's an element that we, where we're when we're reading the scriptures, we need to understand the big picture story that God has revealed in, in the scriptures. That God has created us. That He's created all things by the word of His power, and that mankind fell into sin and and were was entered into a state of brokenness in which they were rebelling against God and and reaping the bitter fruit of that rebellion. And they needed someone to redeem them, and that was Christ. And Christ being the God. The, the Son of God who took on flesh, taking on all that it means to be human, uh, yet without sin, and lived for our righteousness and died for our sins so that we might have life with God through his resurrection. And 
knowing that God is, that he is coming back again to restore all things at his coming, understanding that big picture of the context of what the Bible is teaching us helps us to understand the parts. And those clear teachings that we see uh, maybe expressed with a little bit more clarity in the New Testament help us to guide, help us understand what was always there in the Old Testament. And so that kind of principle of scripture interprets scripture, having the entire canon in mind, but also respecting the immediate context of what's happening in this book, what's happening in this letter, what what happened in the paragraph before, in the sentence before, where is it going? All of that is ma- matters because scripture is the one that's supposed to guide us in our interpretation of scripture. Yeah, you know, I kind of uh, makes me think about how a lot of times we hear people, uh, even in a joking context, refer to the God in the Old Testament, and the God in the New Testament, and obviously it's the same God. And if you try to separate the characteristics of God from one from one part of the the Bible to the other, you're going to really miss a, a really important part. And so that's why important why it's important to keep scripture together as a whole and, and, and use it to reinforce what you're learning in other parts of the, of the Bible. Yeah, absolutely. God is eternal and he's unchanging and, uh, and he's not conflicted within himself either. So, yeah. I mean, the God that we really, the old and new Testament, our Christian scripture is meant to guide us in the life of faith. And all of it testifies of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why the third posture is, is that we want to approach the scriptures according to, with good doctrine, with good theology and to read them theologically. Uh, I mean, we we recognize that this is testifying of Jesus Christ. Um, some theologians in the past have called this the rule of faith, or the analogy of faith, or, or what different terms have come up with different uh, different eras have come up with different terms. But what they're what they're saying is is that the Bible has a message, and that message is that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that and understanding these principles, kind of what I had walked through uh, a moment ago helps us understand the Bible, and we interpret the parts of Scripture in light of the whole message. And that way we keep things, like you said, in a cohesive whole. So we we read the Scriptures. um, The three postures, are just to recap, are we approach the Scriptures with humility. We approach the Scriptures recognizing that the Scriptures themselves guide us in the proper interpretation of them, paying respect to context in the entire canon. And then we read the Scriptures with good doctrine uh, in mind. That way it helps, provides a safeguard from error. Because there might be some passages that we're reading, and um, a good example with this would be James 2, yeah. when it says uh, Paul's talking about, uh, James is talking about being justified uh, by works. He uses that language. He's not contradicting Paul, and Paul's not contradicting James. They're not at any, in enemies with one another. But there's a, a, a doctrinal framework provided by the scriptures that guides us into reading, understanding what James is meaning, yeah. uh, which is very, uh, which he's dealing with a completely different issue. Uh, than what Paul is getting at in Romans 4 or in Galatians. Uh, and one's getting towards the nature of justification, and one's getting towards the effects of justification. And so that's a, a kind of a, a high-level uh, application of that, but that's a good example of why reading the Scriptures with good doctrine in mind um, is helpful. So what do we do about just making sure we're establishing that good doctrine? Like, how do we make sure we're— we're holding true to what we need to think about as we're, we're studying the Word of God. Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, I think some of the, the, the key things that I would encourage someone to do would be to just stay immersed in the Scriptures. Read the Scriptures, study them, just pour over them, and, and, and just understand, just to, you know, continue to ask for help, you know, seek the Spirit's help in understanding the Scriptures, but just to stay immersed in the text. And then to stay connected to the community of God's people both in your local church and, is just, if you think about it, the church throughout the ages, because the Spirit has been at work throughout Christians throughout the history of the church. And there's a wealth of resources uh, that the church has been uh, entrusted with, and they, they speak with some clarity, some gra- at different periods with greater clarity than others yeah. on different doctrines or different issues. So this context of this understanding of, I want to stay connected to the people of God as I'm being immersed in, in the text. And I'm not talking about just the people of God or here today, but throughout history, helps us to kind of stay um, in the right track because you're not the first person to ever read the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> and there's there's been a lot of people who the Spirit has worked mightily through, and they can serve as good helps that we don't want to um, neglect. And then the third one would be just to stay, to be, be discipled. Mm-hmm. Um, have someone who is further along in your faith, their faith journey than you, and just walking through and guiding you through, hey, this is good doctrine. Hey, this is bad doctrine. This is a good way to understand this biblical passage. This is a bad way to understand this 
passage. That kind of help from a mentor is biblical. It's what Paul says to Timothy, tells Timothy to do in 2 Timothy 2.2. Yep. Um, and it's helpful for us as we're walking with our journey with God, as spe- specifically as we study the scriptures. Yeah, I've heard, you know, one of my favorite quotes I picked up on a long time ago was, ministry happens best in the context of relationship. Yeah. If you're not in relationship, every aspect of ministry, whether it's personal or within the church or just outside the church walls, is not going to be successful. And this is just another example of that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it, it's all the more serious because we know that fa- how false teachers operate. And there's an, an illustration from the early church, a guy named Irenaeus, that he used. And he talks about the Bible uh, the biblical passages form kind of like a mosaic, and they yeah. form this image of the king, Christ. And he says, but false teachers, what they do is they take these individual stones out of the mosaic, and they say, hey, look, this piece is blue. And you're looking at them, you're like, yeah, that piece looks blue. But then they put it in the wrong spot. And so instead of crafting the image of the king, what they end up crafting is the image of a fox. And it's and that's how they lead people astray, is they take they they do not embrace the three postures that we've been talking yeah. about. And they lead people astray by taking verses out of context, taking, not reading them according to good doctrine, and not reading them with humility. And they lead people, instead of to see the image of the king, Christ, in the scriptures, they give them something much cheaper, yeah. an image of a fox. So these ideas, and really all we're talking about, take practice, take time to really develop. But just if we think about starting somewhere today, if you haven't been doing this or just you're really wanting to hone in on this a little more, how do we apply these as we're studying scripture today? Yeah, I think one good exercise for you, and this is one of my seminary professors, he did this with me uh, in our, our class, actually, in, in the course that was designed for this. Um, he got us to read through Hebrews 11 and 12 yeah. and read it repetitively and see, because Hebrews 11 and 12 is really fascinating because it starts with creation and ends with, uh, moves into Christ coming, his first coming, and then ultimately points towards the kingdom that is to come. So you get kind of a microcosm of the Bible's own self-interpretation of the entire meta narrative of Scripture and how it centers on who Christ is, what he has done, and what he will do. So as you read Hebrews 11 and 12 and you get that framework in mind, that kind of gives you some patterns for how to go back and read uh, the Old Testament and understand the, where, where the New Testament is going as well. That's great. So again, this is a multiple different elements that we're thinking through in this. And today's just one more building block that we have in that tool to work off of. So you can reach out to us if you have any questions directly by emailing us at info at mbchurch.com. Make sure you also like and subscribe so you can stay up to date when we post new episodes. We're also looking forward to our next episode of the Forward Podcast, where we discuss asking the right questions as we study God's Word.